the question says that in the context of abstract syntax tree that is AST and control flow graph which is CFG which one of the following is true so the options are first option is in both AST and CFG let node N2 be the successor of node N1 in the input program the code corresponding to N2 is present after the code of N1 now this statement is not correct why is it not correct because firstly what is a successor of a node any node that has a direct edge from a particular previous node is known as the successor of another node so since there is an edge in this case from n to o so o is the successor of n all right but it is not always true that the node which is the successor that node's code will be written after the code of the predecessor node okay this is the predecessor node and why it is not true it is not true in cases where go to statements are present so if we have a statement like we have statement 1 i equal to 1 we have statement 2 suppose j equal to 1 and there are certain statements in between and there is a statement that says that suppose if i is equal to equal to 5 go to 2 okay now this means that when i draw the control graph of this particular program 5 the node 5 is appearing after node 2 but after executing node 5 if this condition is true there would be an edge from 5 to 2 that means although the code of node 2 is appearing before the code of node 5 still there is an edge from node 5 to node 2 that means node 2 is the successor of node 5 therefore this option is wrong because the code of the successor can be present after its predecessor in cases of statements like go to okay so this is not the correct statement now coming to the second option for any input program neither AST nor CFG will contain a cycle this is again incorrect why this in cases of loops we can always have a cycle that means if there are certain statements to be repeated therefore there would exist an edge between a particular node and itself and that is known as a loop that is a self loop okay or there can exist a loop or a cycle between multiple edges also if they are being repeated okay so this statement is incorrect coming to the third statement the maximum number of successors of a node in an abstract syntax tree that is AST and control flow graph depend on the input program definitely this is correct because whatever be the input of a program whatever is the input program the number of successors that a particular node can have it will in its abstract syntax tree as well as in control flow graph it depends only on the program so a node can have a different number or more number of successors if a different input program is given to it so if there is a particular if case if else ladder in that case a particular node will have more successors as compared to a simple if statement all right so yes this statement is correct now coming to the last statement let's check what it says each node in abstract syntax tree and cfg corresponds to at most one statement in input program no not at all a single basic block can be a collection or it can be a set of multiple statements that are sequentially executed so it can be three four and so on till seven and any number of statements that actually can be grouped together to serve as a single block or a single node so this is also incorrect okay so the correct answer is option c here now coming to the second question we have to match the following columns and the options in the first column are lexical analysis parsing register allocation and expression evaluation and in the second column 
the options given are graph coloring, DFA minimization, post order traversal and production tree. So uh, this is not at all a difficult question. See lexical analysis is useful when uh, you have to do DFA minimization. Okay, so lexical analysis goes with DFA minimization minimization okay so P matches with 2 okay now parsing results or it is a stage of compiling that generates in the production of trees okay the production trees or the parsing trees so parser or parsing generates production trees production trees therefore option Q maps to option 4 now coming to register allocation register allocation is modeled by graph coloring okay it is a phenomena that directly relates to graph coloring so option R of register allocation maps to option 1 that is graph coloring and the remaining last option expression evaluation definitely in post order traversal expression evaluation is the main uh, criteria or concept that is used or you can say the other way around as well that expression post order traversal is uh, uh, be based on expression evaluation okay so s maps to the third option so the correct option out of all these a b c d r p maps to 2 q maps to 4 r maps to 1 and s maps to 3 so c is the correct option so that's all for today's lecture these were pretty easy questions you have to read all these options correctly and uh, mark the correct answer sometimes in match the following students calculate the right answer they match the options correctly but they mark the correct incorrect options because uh, they get a little confused between the options given so please don't make such mistakes you if you know the concept it will be very easy to clear any exam that the question says that a variable x is said to be live at a statement si in a program if the following three conditions hold simultaneously and the conditions are there exists a statement sj that uses x there is a path from si to sj in the flow graph corresponding to the program and third condition is the path has no intervening assignment to x including at si and sj so this is the th for, uh, uh, set of four basic blocks and a program control graph that you can say it is given to you and you are told that the variables which are live at the statement in the basic block 2 and at the statement in the basic block 3 of the above control graph are all right so you have to find out which variables out of all the variables mentioned here are live at the basic block 2 or at the basic block 3 okay so what is a live variable basically a live variable analysis is useful in compilers if you have to find all those variables that will be used in future okay so the variables that are used in future or may be needed in future there those variables are known as live variables provided that there is no intervening assignment and when i say intervening assignment i mean that there is no such assignment that contradicts the previous definition so if you have assigned x equal to 3 somewhere and before using this value of x you assign x equal to 4 and then use the value of x so basically what value is being used four value is being used and the definition x equal to three is null and void so that is known as a dead variable or the dead code x equal to three and it can be completely removed so this the liveliness of a variable is used in code optimization things okay so here we have to find out which variables are live and which are dead so in if we suppose that at basic block 2 p is live okay so first we have to find out that there should be a statement sj that uses x so here our si is a statement at which we have to find 
the variable is live or not so si that we would be using here is currently we would be examining that which variables are live at statement number 2 or the basic block 2 okay so our si is 2 let us suppose that we are finding if p is live or not so first we have to find out a statement that uses p okay so p is being used at this statement s equal to p plus q now when i say it is being used it means it is coming on the right hand side okay so if i write something like p equal to q plus r this is an assignment and it is not said to be the use of p okay when i say P is being used, it is something like this, the second statement that is mentioned here, P plus Q, okay. So, when P appears on the right hand side, it is being used. So, first we find a statement where P is being used. So, the second statement of this block is the use of P, okay. Now, we must have to find a path from SI. SI is 2, SJ is the statement where P is being used, which is the second statement of the first block so i am writing as 1.2 okay there is a path from si to sj yes if i go from 2 to 4 and then to 1 again i'll find a path from si to sj but the third condition says that the path should not have any intervening assignment that means in this path before p is being used there should not be any a new assignment of p but P is being assigned at location 1.1. Okay, here we are talking of variable P. So, P is being assigned at 1.1, which is before it is being used. So, P is not live at 2 and it is said to be dead. Okay, similarly, if I consider for 3 also, if I assume SI equal to be 3 in this case and check if P is being is live here or not so i see that the only place p is being used is this second statement of first block that means my sj would still remain 1.2 but it is being assigned at 1.1 therefore p is dead in both these basic blocks now coming to the next variable q first uh, for q let's see si si will always remain either 2 or 3 because we have to check at these two places only so find out where q is being used q is being used again at place 1.1 so our sj is 1.1 and the path the second question the second condition is we have to find a path from si to sj so our si is 2 our sj is 1.1 and the path 2 to 4 and to 1.1 exists but 4 is redeclaring or assigning a q again therefore q is dead here because q is being reassigned at 4 it becomes dead at basic block 4 similarly if i see q at si equal to 3 that means if i have to check the liveness of q at 3 either i can check it the same way i did for q I, I did for the second basic block 2 that means starting here i find the place where q is being used q is being used here at 1.1 but it is being redeclared at 4 so again q is dead at both 2 and 3 or i can do this also that instead of considering 4 i can consider the basic block 3 and see that at basic block 3 only it is being assigned before it is being used here since the third condition says that the path has no intervening assignment to x including at si or sj so our si was 3 q is being reassigned at 3 therefore it becomes dead here before it is being used all right now we'll check for further variables let's check for r for r if I start at 2, SI is equal to 2, I check here, R is being used at SI, at 2 only. So, our SJ would also be 2, okay? 
so since there is there always exists a path from a node to itself of length 0 therefore we can say that r is life or if you want to consider in another manner si can be 2 sj can be 4 r is being used at 4 and there is a direct path from 2 to 4 without any further assignment in between so r is live at 2 all right similarly if i check for 3 here there is no use of r but r is being used at 4 so we and there is a path from basic block 3 to basic block 4 or node 3 to node 4 therefore r is live here also so one of the variables that is live is r so in the options that you are given you can completely ignore all those options that do not contain r all right also now we have two remaining variables r and u and r s and u the only different variable here is s let's check for s and it will be very clear so s is being used at this point and s is being used at this point okay so if i consider for s and i take si equal to 3 first si is equal to 3 sj is also equal to 3 therefore s is being used here only without any further declaration in between but if i consider this point where s is being used therefore i have to consider all the possible places at which s is being used s should be live at all the places because if s has to be live at basic block 3 then it ha there should not be any possibility where it can become dead okay so we considered this possibility of s being live here s is being used here there is a path of length 0 from basic block 3 to itself therefore s is live here because there is no intermediate assignment in between okay now considering the use of s here so instead of considering sj equal to 3 i consider sj equal to 1.3 that is the third statement of first basic block so s is being used here there is a path from 3 to 4 and to 1 but s is being reassigned at this place okay so s becomes dead at 1.2 and since it becomes dead at one a particular position that starts from 3 and leads to 1.2 therefore we will not say that s is live s becomes dead at this point so the only two variables that are live are r and u u would be live just like uh, we considered for r okay there is u is being used here and u if we start from 2 and see that si would be 2 sj would be 2 and there is a path of 0 length from this node to itself okay because there isn't a loop right now so uh, we would say that u is still live here all right or you can say that u is being used at point 3 again there is no particular there is no other point at which there is a cancellation of this use of u and there is a path of zero length from three to three therefore u is also live so the correct answer is the variables r and u are live at the basic blocks two and three okay so this concept of liveliness or live analysis or you can say live variable analysis is very important in cases of code optimization in compiler design because using this you can eliminate all the dead code and reduce the complexity of your program and as well as the running time. So that's all for today's lecture. Thank you for watching this video. If you understood this question, please like our video and share it with your friends. Stay tuned to the channel of Easy Engineering Classes for more tutorials on various computer science related subjects as well as more lectures on our preparation series. Thank you.